Hello scouts, it's Mr. Kugler, and today we're gonna to go over something that, just about anything that you do in a Dutch oven, at the end of it, you need to worry about cleaning your Dutch oven. Now, certain things are gonna be a lot easier to clean. Obviously, baking a loaf of bread could be as easy as wiping out uh, the container, uh, wiping out the inside of the pot and the inside of the lid. You probably don't even have to touch the lid. Uh, and maybe it's more cleaning the outside of the Dutch oven from the ash that accumulated. However, if you're doing a stew or roasting something, a uh, piece of meat, there could be a lot of buildup on the bottom. So what I'd like to do is go through some of the basic tools that you would need to be able to clean your Dutch oven. Probably the first and one of the most important items that you're going to use in cleaning your Dutch oven is going to be some hot water. Now I have some hot water here. And it's important to bring up hot water. What you don't want to do is take a hot Dutch oven in the middle of the winter and add ice cold water to that because you're going to shock the cast iron and you're going to shatter it or crack your cast iron Dutch oven. Aluminum Dutch ovens is a totally different way to clean and you could clean those more similarly to what you would do washing your normal pots and pans. But cast iron's a little different. So we have water and we want it hot so we don't shock the cast iron. The other thing we want to do is we're not going to use soap. Now I understand in, in the last 10 years or so there's been a movement towards using soap with the cast iron and uh, even some of the manufacturers are starting to agree that you can use soap provided that you rinse it well. But if you do it properly you don't need soap to be able to wash your, your Dutch oven. One of the concerns is that soap is going to get down in the pores of your cast iron and then it's going to affect the next food that you put in there or it could even take away some of your seasoning, that protective coating that's on your cast iron. So water, no soap. Before we get started cleaning, we're going to wipe out and maybe it involves some paper towels that we need to use to wipe out some of the, the material. Maybe it takes rinsing it out a little bit with some warm water, hot water, uh, and uh, have your gray water bucket so that we're protecting the environment and we're not uh, going against our leave no trace principles. So you could dump the water that'll have some food particles in your bucket and then screen it later with a piece of screen or some other devices to be able to remove the food particles. If you have some items that are, are uh, stuck on the surfaces of the cast iron, a scraper, this is a plastic scraper. This is made by one of the Dutch oven manufacturers, but pretty much any kitchen gadget store will have these scrapers that you can get. They have a rounded corner, they're plastic, and they're gentle on your cast iron. Uh, they're not going to damage your seasoning and they give you a tool to be able to remove some of that baked on uh, material that may be on there. If you have some really bad areas, uh, and I know some people may frown upon this, check with your leaders before you use it on your unit's cast iron, but this chain mail has become more prevalent uh, recently and it's a number of rings of uh, metal wire and so if you have some really aggressive uh, work that you need to do, and I wouldn't use this all the time, this is in rare occasions, this chain mail uh, would be a good solution to be able to do that. Primarily what you're going to be using though is a scrub brush. This is a scrub brush that's actually made for the dairy industry for cleaning out dairy tubs uh, where they're processing milk. This is the short handle version, they make a long handle version as well. Uh, and I found this to be a, a lifesaver. It's a long bristles, and these are natural fiber bristles, which means that they're not plastic or nylon, which is going to melt when it's up against a, a very hot Dutch oven. This one is by Solo Brush out of Torrington, Connecticut, and I think it was less than $7, uh, which is, in some instances, uh, some of the manufactured uh, ones by, uh, that are manufactured by some of the Dutch oven uh, suppliers can run, you know, nine, 10, 12, $15. Uh, so this brush is, is, is very durable. Uh, it has a lot of surface area and you can really get in and, and, and scrub your Dutch ovens. 
One of the other things that you're going to need is uh, when you get done is some oil. I just use canola oil. This is by Pam. One of the things that you want to watch for is some of the less expensive uh, cooking oils. The spray can, the nozzle maybe doesn't work as well. Uh, Pam has a great nozzle on it uh, and they're able to disperse the, uh, the, the oil well. The other thing you're going to want, if you have it, is a brush like this. This is a mason's brush. And what I like about this is I can clean off the soot in the ash, or the, excuse me, the ash on the outside of my Dutch oven and start speeding up that process. Uh, and I don't have to take that ash off with water. I can take it off uh, with uh, this brush. So why don't we get started? We have our hot water. Um, I, I'm going to use a stove here uh, to heat up the Dutch oven as I'm working on it. Uh, and I, with the lid, one of the challenges I have is if I put my lid upside down on my stove here it's going to hit the burner and it's going to rock and that's going to make a mess so i'm using this trivet or lid stand upside down um, so that my lid can rest there uh, safely make sure that you have your stove follow your manufacturer specifications and instructions on how to use your stove and make sure you're on a level surface on a, a good solid base this is actually a dutch oven table uh, and and make sure that when you put your heavy Dutch oven on there that you don't have an issue. You'll notice when I put the pot on here, I've already checked to make sure that the legs of my Dutch oven will fit through the slots on this grate and it will sit safely on the metal down below. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the brush and I'm gonna clean some of that ash off of the top of my Dutch oven. So I have all the ash off the top of my Dutch oven here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the pot. My pot has a lot of debris in it. And the debris was from baking uh, some Hill Country coffee cake. And I've got some where the batter got on the sides and I've got some in the bottom. And I'm going to start off with my scraper. So I've got my debris separated from that. Now I'm going to do is the same time, I'm going to come up and I have a little bit of stuff on the lid. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to scrape my lid and try to remove as much of the material from the lid. And, and now I'm going to grab a paper towel and I'm going to step off camera and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the debris that's in the bottom of my Dutch oven. I'm going to go, I have a garbage can off camera and I'm going to go dump uh, these uh, crumbs out of there and get ready to start washing this pot. Now understand, I purposely picked a dish that was a little easier to clean uh, to go through this process uh, to not uh, to make it a little easier. So I understand using a coffee cake that was in here is a little easier, but the method is going to be the same to clean this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put on my gloves because I'm going to be handling a hot pot. I'm going to take and pour some water, hot water into my Dutch oven. And now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to move it around in the pot, trying not to splash it around. Because I don't want to make a mess of my stove. Now what I'll do is, depending on how challenging the item is that I'm trying to, the contents that I'm trying to clean off, I may do repeat this process three, four times. I'm going to keep doing this until the water comes out clean and without any food particles in it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take and pour this in my gray water bucket. And because I'm relatively clean right now, I'm actually going to use it to pre-clean 
the outside of my lid before I clean the other side of my lid. One of the things that's important to keep in mind is that I'm using warm water right now and that wasn't very hot, hot water. Had I had really hot water in there that I could have injured myself on, that approach there of watching off the outside, the ash off the outside of the lid would not have been a good approach to use unless perhaps um, I had somebody helping me and one of us were holding the Dutch oven lid like this uh, so that we didn't get wet because think about that hot water going over these gloves. These gloves aren't going to be much use uh, if you are, if they get saturated with boiling hot water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do another run through. As I mentioned, this was relatively clean, so it was an easy cleanup. Uh, and I'm going to take and I'm going to run this through. And I can see that my water is nice and clean because I had a, I was cooking a cake, baking a cake, so it was a little easier to keep uh, the inside of the oven clean. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and dump my water out in the gray water bucket. And I could have also used that for the other side of my lid, but I'll do that in a second here. I've got my trivet there and I'm going to take and pour a little bit of water on my lid. And I want to try to be careful because I don't want to get a ton of water in my, on my camp stove because that's going to be another thing I need to clean. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to try and clean this as best I can. If I had it in the edges, I'd have to work it harder and maybe do this over the bucket. But I'm able to do this pretty easily. It's also important to understand what the food scraps are uh, so you know if it's going to create a challenge or a health issue, how much it takes to clean. So I've got the warm water. It's already looking good, but I'm going to give it another little bit of water. In my lid, I'm using a, a large Dutch oven. So my lid ha is concaved. So it's like a little bit of a dish and it's holding. I'm using the tongs here to hold this if this was hot. And I'm going to take and I'm getting a little bit on my stove. So I'm going to have to clean that up afterwards. And again, I'm going to take and go over to my gray water bucket. So now I have my lid complete and it's nice and clean. I'm going to put it back on top of my stove here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up to be able to dry it out. Now, if I was cooking around the fire, I could put this on a trivet uh, near the fire and I could dry it that way. But uh, today I'm not, so I'm going to light up the burner of my stove. Now I can help it a little bit, get it started by trying to clean off a little bit of the water without coming near the flame. bring that up to a nice warm temperature because what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to make sure that the Dutch oven is thoroughly dry. With cast iron I don't want to leave it wet because that's going to create rust. So by putting it on the stove here or on the campfire over some coals, not screaming hot uh, on the fire, but you know this with a high volume on the burner is going to be fine on this watching it. Don't leave it unattended, don't forget about it. Uh, keep an eye on it and you'll get a feel for when it dries off because I'm not only trying to dry the top, I'm also trying to dry the top of the lid or which is underneath here as well. So I took a look underneath and the top portion of the Dutch oven lid is looking great. It's nice and dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to
turn off my heat, turn that off, and then what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of this Pam spray. I want to be careful not to get it all over my stove. And I've got a little bit of paper towel here. And what I'm trying to do is wipe up any residual oil. I'm also trying to use that oil that's extra that's pooling up there. And I'm trying to get around the edge. And remember, I've got my, my gloves on here so that I'm not burning myself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to give the top a little coating as well. It's important with your Dutch oven uh, to keep an eye on it, especially the top takes a lot of abuse because the ash and the coals that are on top. So it's good to uh, keep it well oiled and periodically do the outside of your Dutch oven. So there we go, I've got my lid done. So we'll take and let this cool off on the trivet. And we'll switch over to drying and coating our pot. So I just worked to find a way to nestle that in there. And I can see that I still have a little bit of water in the bottom of this Dutch oven. So instead of evaporating all that water out, I could use some paper towel or I could even use a regular dish towel to be able to clean up some of that excess water. Now what I will do is I'm going to turn on the burner and we're going to heat this pot up. and we'll make sure it's thoroughly dried. I'm starting to get a little smoke on the bottom of the pot and the inside, so that tells me I'm up to temperature and I could turn the heat off. What I'll start by doing is putting a coating of the Pam spray on the inside of the pot. It's important to make sure you get the sides as well as the bottom. And then as I wipe this out, I'll try to get the rim of the pot as well. With the inside of my pot done, I'm going to flip it over and give the outside of the pot a quick coating of oil. It's important to also make sure you get the legs of the stove and make sure that they're coated as well. So there we go. We have our pot oiled inside and out, our lid inside and out. Got it nice and clean, ready to use the next time. And more importantly, it's ready for the next generation of scouts to use long beyond your use of it by taking care of the tools that you are allowed to use as a scout. So I hope this has been helpful in giving you some of the very basics of cleaning a Dutch oven. I hope that you take care of your own Dutch oven or Dutch ovens that belong to your troop as if they were yours uh, so that they could be used for years to come and enjoyed making great Dutch oven meals.